project is really promising. I think it has some very good points. I like the fact that you explore sound, that you explored also and push for indigenous uh, fabric, but also about the sustainability of fabrics. Not a lot of people think about it uh, nowadays, but a lot of the waste uh, that we have uh, in the planet uh, actually comes from, from fashion and textile because, uh, you know, for many factors, we use synthetic uh, elements in our fabric. We have uh, throwaway fashion, so that all goes into the landfill. There's very little study on how to recycle textile. So I think that that's the part that I uh, really like the most. And of course, recognizing um, the Tiboli uh, culture of uh, Mindanao and incorporating it into Kamuning. No? So it's like, it's like you're connecting a 20th century uh, center of textile with something that's uh, more traditional uh, in, in our culture because Kamuning is still part of our culture. Uh, culture doesn't mean that it has to be old. Uh, culture is actually happening today. So uh, it's, it's an interesting marriage between uh, the indigenous and, and the modern through your project. First off, I like uh, the lot that you chose. Uh, so I, I thought that, uh, you know, it, it, it's quite, uh, it's, it's, it's a corner lot with a huge, with a long uh, frontage. So uh, I like that uh, to begin with. Um, I, I was thinking that you, that would have been a big asset uh, when you planned your your uh, your project, you mentioned also in your video that there is a strong walking culture in in Kamuning, and uh, it, it's it for me was a bit surprising. Although I know it's it's common in the country because of the state of our transport system that a lot of people really walk. But I'm imagining that the Kamuning area is is uh, you're saying it's walking it's a walking. Um, culture because also of the nature no there's a market there there's a uh, there's a, a place where you can buy textile and people do walk around when, when you when you buy textile because you have to choose no? and I like the fact that you introduce intercropping because why not you know you are you are expanding the, the usefulness of soil if you do that and uh, I like actually both plants that you chose. Uh, turmeric, especially turmeric, I think it is a, a wonder plant that we have a lot of that people should start uh, uh, drinking or, or ingesting because it really is uh, very healthy. Um, so I like that. But the idea of intercropping inside the building is quite intriguing. Um, you mentioned also plant dyes. So maybe that was one direction I was hoping uh, you'd get into as well. Uh, for the design of the building, again, as with the others, I was hoping that you would use the roof deck uh, because for me, the roof deck is uh, a, a, a space that uh, just needs to be explored uh, further. We're not so, so encouraged to do that because we always have issues of... Uh, leaks and improper um, waterproofing and that's happened it happened just recently in one of my projects it's been a nightmare but that does not discount the fact that there is this huge area on top of our buildings that we can use I don't know, and, uh, yeah this part is sort of like uh, half of the roof deck where I sort of place the dying activities of the the fabric and the fibers. I meant for, I meant for planting, Janelle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Or Sorry, let me and lang address that because I also want to use a lot of roof deck in in my projects. In fact, my current project, they wanted the roof deck, but you know, it had to be turned down because of the cost. It's like building another floor. So sometimes uh -huh. it goes down to, to, to cost. Because eh. if they're not going to use it as a livable space, the question is, why would we spend for it? <laughs> but we have roof decks all over the city. And they, that's they, also my question. But the, I, I guess it's really the costing that is really preventing people from, from doing it. 
I think it's just proper uh, waterproofing and if that's going to be expensive, I'm, as I said, we have roof decks all over our, the metro that's generally, for me, underutilized. So, you know, if, if that's something that we can look into as well. Um, okay. Yeah, so, so I just want, wanted to mention that. Um, I also like the fact that you thought of sound absorption and that you used uh, abaca and the qualities of abaca to manage sound and also using them as screens because, yeah, you mentioned that we have underutilized and underdeveloped abaca and I agree. It's, abaca is one of the oldest uh, plant fibers that we use for garments you know, in, in the Philippines, even before mm -hmm. the pre-Hispanic period uh, that has been used. The reason why abaca disappeared as a textile and also as rope, because it really is the strongest rope in the world. Uh, the galleon trade would not have pushed through if not for abaca, because uh, abaca is one of the strongest uh, 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 material that you can use for lashing for ships, you know, and 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 it lasts uh, a really long time. It doesn't disintegrate as much. Um, so, so yeah, I, I I like the fact also that you use it as screens. Uh, the reason also uh, why I wanted to say that abaca disappeared is because in the 19th century the British uh, told the colonies, and this included eventually the Philippines, that we have a new product called cotton. It's made in England. We can produce a lot of them, but we need markets for it. And they turned the colonies into markets. That's the reason why Gandhi made his protest. One of his protests is the return to traditional Indian materials and not wear cotton. Diba Gandhi was naked because he didn't want to use the cotton that was pushed by the British. Now, this happened in the Philippines also. A lot of our traditional uh, fabric, especially the ones that are woven, including abaca, disappeared because cotton flooded the market. And that uh, in in that affected the industry, you no, know, the, the indigenous uh, industry of abaca. So there, uh, I just wanted to share that a little bit. I still have some notes, Janelle. Um, okay, I just have a question though with the choice of abaca as your plant because you are uh, elevating it on uh, above the ground, and I again I go back to. Uh, what would the root system of a plant need in terms of the volume of soil for it to really flourish? You no, know? uh, you that is that, yeah. You have a beautiful illustration of a cutaway uh, of the plant. There you go. So I don't know if it's illustrative uh, really of what it needs in terms of uh, the container. Um, honestly, I have not seen an abaca plant inside a pot, but I'm sure it's beautiful. Because for me, plants that have these banana-like uh, leaves are, are beautiful, uh, even for interiors. So, so I don't know if these containers that you've designed are enough. Uh, I was actually thinking that instead of these um, uh, inverted arches, oh, these are uh, these uh, uh, containers that point downwards. If it can be like a the reverse, like a cup instead. Instead of, of doing it this way, I don't know if yeah, I'm, yeah. It could yeah. be cup because then it will hold more volume. But then again, you'd think of you need to think of the structural system. Now, if there is a way for you to study, because now there are lightweight types of soil, maybe that's something that you can um, you can look into. Because iba na to eh, ang ginagawa mo eh, you're actually taking a plant species and giving it a different environment. You're not already planting it into soil, which is where it traditionally is, and and then transferring it into a different environment. So, again, as I said, uh, it is it's vital that you study the characteristics of whatever plant uh, you choose, so that it will flourish. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you said that they grow along hills on hillsides. So I was wondering if you tried to to simulate a hillside effect with your architecture so that, I don't know, maybe you can have a row of these abaca plants and each, as it goes up, it protects the ones below. Um, that, that was just uh, my thought. And then, uh, okay, uh, again, I was just wondering if in your lot plan, if there was space uh, on the ground 
that you can use to plant abaca? Uh, because uh, maybe it will be it will flourish more on the ground. Uh, but still, you can still have it on the top floor uh, because I think that's a great uh, element. You just have to figure out how best it can it can grow. Um, Cooks mentioned VTN. That's v uh, correct, right, uh, Cooks? Yes. Uh, Yes, the Vietnamese architect. When yes, I yes, see their yes. building, that's always my first question. How much soil did they put on top of those buildings for them to be able to grow trees? But then again, if you can find a tree that does not need that much soil, then you, you can solve the problem. So again, it goes back to your choice of, of vegetation. Um, okay, so I... The question I have here, uh, Janelle, is that you are imagining this place to have this, um, I guess, the Bali women weaving uh, the whole day, and then they're producing uh, this uh, uh, fabric that goes into the shop through a system. Question number one, is there a way to mechanize the process of abaca? Uh, I, I, I cannot for the life of me, imagine a 21st century system wherein you have these people doing the manual steps of, of extracting the fiber and pounding them. And I think architecture should help also in improving the workflow and, the, and, 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 uh, and, and, the, and be of benefit also to the workers. Um, so for example, pounding, the pounding of the abaca is done on a horizontal level because you need that uh, you need the surface against which to pound the fabric against. Tama ba? Is that did I say it right? If you do it vertically, number one, you will not be able to pound it properly because there's no nothing behind it that yeah. will create that that uh, action against the yeah. pounding, and it will not also create a sound. If you're thinking that it would be like a drum, a stretch mm -hmm. fabric for a drum, uh, it, it also mm -hmm. might not uh, think of, uh, it might not uh, work that way. The reason why I really want to, to, for you to think about this is because tama ka, yung abaka napaka underutilized, is under the radar, but it's a great plant. It's something that we've lost appreciation for. But if, and one of the reasons though why it has stopped is because well, as I said, um, uh, plastics also have replaced the the Manila hemp. I don't know if you guys remember Manila hemp. That used to be the name of a uh, rope that comes from the Philippines. And uh, 100 years ago, that was like the top uh, product that were used by uh, shipbuilders uh, and the shipping industry. Uh, so... If, if you can mechanize the system and make it easier for people to work uh, with abaca and, and put this in, in your system uh, or even also through architecture, then that would be great. And I placed here a note that said, please work with a mechanical engineer because what you have here, your idea is yeah. great, but you just need to have a mechanical engineer. For example, yeah. if I am looming, doing working on the loom, how will the fabric go up? It, yeah. I mean, it, can't, it can't just be pulled down below in the yeah. shop and then it will go up. It, yeah. it's, a whole, it's actually a, a very Victorian system if you think about <laughs> it. But, but it has to be that way uh, for it to work. Um, and also, when they do their, uh, their fabric, there is a beginning and an end to the whole fabric. No, it doesn't go forever. So, you know, that, that has to, you, you have to think of that also. Uh, in traditional weaving um, cultures, they weave a story, actually. Cooks, you will like this. When they weave, it's actually a story they weave with thread. You know? And that is one tradition of the Philippines that we should really be proud of because we're so good at it. Magaling tayo mag, mag weave, mag tahi ng textile. May kwento yan. Some of the weavers actually go into a trance, trance-like state the whole day. Because they feel that they're communicating to their ancestors and to their gods. No? Minsan, nagpapasalamat sila sa, sa materialis at sa mga kwento. And then the guys 
uh, that also comes from from nature. So yun, i-mechanize mo lang yung process kasi hindi pwedeng merong merong sampung matatanda diyan na nagwi-weave buong araw. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it kind of been a lot. Yeah. So actually ang, ang sad sa industry, they would charge, they make something for like a month or two and then, and then they would charge 800 or 1000 exactly. or 2000. The middleman, they, they, yeah. they, you know, drew down the price. Uh, and then tayo naman, we cut it up and turn them into God knows what, sleepers, wallet. Pero, uh, but that's another discussion. But, but I really appreciate uh, Jerry's input. Yeah. It only proves that we really miss his lecture in history. So, <laughs> and uh, I actually like the some of the ideas that he mentioned Uh, like how the weavers go into a trance-like state, you know. Oh. If this is like, an, if this project can be extended one more term, probably those inputs can be incorporated that what that way. New experience than the space. I think yeah. that uh, <laughs> the when Sir Jerry, when you talked about the um them being in a trance-like state, because I did research on that too, and how their their act is very sacred. So I think that sort of influenced the way I uh, designed the architecture to sort of emulate the essence of like a church also or uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah because uh-huh. um I yeah. wanted the the act to feel the same as how these tribes did it because now it's not as you know uh, popularized in our culture anymore so beautiful I know what you're trying to do, though, uh, Janelle. You're trying to demonstrate the skill of these workers, and it's really a skill yeah. and a talent. Uh, you know, this uniquely Filipino. Uh, maybe what you can do, you have an area there where it's like a school uh, where, where the weavers can show how they do it, uh, and you can have guest weavers. We have a an award called um, uh, the Gawad Manlilika. It's called the Gamaba Awards. It's the It's the indigenous counterpart of the National Artists of the Philippines. And the Gamaba Awardees, which for me are as deserving as the National Artists, are those from the indigenous tribes, uh, indigenous groups of the Philippines. So if you want to, to show how the textile is made, maybe you can have another area. But I sort of like that whole movement of the textile as it goes up and down. I think even if you mechanize it, it will not lose its appeal. Because uh, it it has a, this special uh, a quality. If you if you let textile move inside a building, uh, you know uh, it gives a, a special quality. I like that part. Just don't let the old women do it the whole day, because makamaga silang mamatay, So. Okay, what are my other... And okay, you said, I put abaca sunscreens on top so that it will uh, screen the, the abaca, the plants on top. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't forget also, it should screen the people. Okay, not just the plant. Ang tao din, kailangan... You protect also the people. And uh, so as I said, going up, maybe you can have more plants uh, above. I know that you're using it for the drying and for the pounding, which is good. Uh, also, uh, so yeah, but but maybe it, you can also use that as planting area. Yeah. And I like that you use it for sound absorption and rain harvesting. I think it's a great idea. Um, okay, down below you have an area for the farmers where they're going to sleep mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Uh, okay, is that area, does it have windows, the rooms? Uh, yeah, I sort of... Um... Sorry, I'm not sure if you can see, but I did sort of um, add um, these windows up above near the ceiling um, here. Mm-hmm. Are they yeah, down below? So... Yeah, uh, so these are um, bedrooms. Okay, I, I have a problem with that, with letting people sleep in the basement without mm-hmm. windows, because I think uh, we need that. 
So mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you you relocate it. Yeah. I wouldn't want to sleep in a windowless room. Yeah. Uh, even yeah. in, even if there's a clear story about it, because you know we can mm -hmm. to the windows when we sleep, and uh, I'm sure you can uh, do something about that. Now, in terms of farmers, uh, I don't think it should be the farmers. Maybe the weavers. Uh, as as I said, maybe you can have a program wherein you have guest weavers from different uh, indigenous uh, groups in the country that they would go there. It could even be. The ones from the north, like the Cordilleras, the Ifugaos, because they also weave. And then the ones in Mindanao, not just the Tiboli, but also the others. And then you could converge there. Your area could be like a, an indigenous uh, uh, a textile center, which includes also teaching, which includes uh, creating awareness about uh, these uh, indigenous arts uh, and crafts that we have. And the rooms can be for those guests that you will invite no uh or even for buyers you know if they want to stay there for one overnight because they have to finish their transaction so it can also be like some sort of an airbnb kind of thing but uh, at the same time um uh, it could also i mean it's not just exclusively for the uh, for the farmers because uh, maybe a gardener no maybe gardener but but not farmers so I think you are the reason why the reason why I um, mentioned the farmers is because the process of um, extracting the abaca fibers is is very like it it's a it requires skill so it's not something that can be done by anyone yeah I especially know. Again, yeah yeah that's why again I go back to the question if you remove this this uh, let's say process uh, step B C D and E and take it out of the building. You ju you're just left with the farm or the plants, mm -hmm. and then you deliver you deliver the, the abaca fiber uh, as it's been mm -hmm. processed already. So so I don't know if that if you have to ask yourself, will my building still fulfill its objective if I remove those steps? Because I'm not sure if in your building those steps from the extracting and the pounding and the uh, you know, and all of those other steps. There's a lot of steps before it becomes mm -hmm. a workable uh, fa um, fabric uh, fiber um, can be accommodated in your building. So, but nonetheless, I, I like that your general concept of uh, of moving uh, fibers and sound and, and uh, the fact that you put it in in Kamuning. Nice. Thank nice. <laughs> Oh, si Cooks na. Okay, my turn. Ayan. So, sabi ko good story at the start, but then I didn't like your audio kasi na-overpower ka. Tapos, maganda na na lang ako, makikikanta na lang ako. Ayan. Memorizing lyrics ka, so. I'm so sorry to the fact that I made that comment. So, Cook wasn't aware about my comment. Yeah. So, Although this is a very good emotional storytelling, that was with all the sound. That's what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting. Um, yung area, parang yung comment ko, because alam ko na mayon sa audio, you have a problem with your mic, probably hindi siya ganon ka clear. Sino sabi ko? Ha, ano yung sinasabi niya? Ano yung sinasabi niya? Sabi ko, comment number T. Ah, Kamuning area. So, hindi ko naintindihan yun the first three times that you were saying. And okay. nagkukwento ka about Kamuning. So, yeah. <laughs> yun lang yung, ano, yung isang comment ko. Tapos, um, so, sabi ko rin, sana nakatingin ka sa camera like what you're doing now. That would be better. Mm -hmm. Ayan. Pwede mga sa video yung first one. Okay. So, very nice in doing so. Yung mga isometric doing so. That they're all very nice. We are actually one of those that are really branded to drawing, so that is also very commendable. You used a very nice, plain, um, calming, pastel-y brown background, and your lines aren't black, they're dark brown. So it was something different that I, I saw from everyone else. So that was actually very good and commendable, and you created your own branding. So yeah, I really like it. Um, yung some site analysis, um you went a lot through different things and then I hope that you said something in along the lines of, I found a lot of things and what interested me actually 
for the project are these and these and these. And that, that would be used as your um, kumbaga basis for what you will do further in the project rather than giving all information. Kasi in, isipin mo na information overload tayo. Tapos kung hindi naman natin gagamitin yung iba, palang nag-wonder din tayo. So bakit mas sinabi yung isang bagay na yun na hinihintay ko? So parang at least um, malaysa natin information overload and much more concise and straight to the point so that we are able to tell our story better. Ayan. Siyempre, parang pag nagkwento tayo, uy, alam mo yung pinsan ni Gento, yung merong aso dun sa mikanto na merong ganun. Sa... So, ayaw na natin man. <laughs> okay na tayo dun sa Missy Gento. So, parang ganun yung nangyayari pa minsan. So, we have to avoid that mm-hmm. one. Tapos, and then, sabi ko, and then I find out this is about a baka. So, I was excited. So, which I hope on onset, of the analysis na dapat ano sana yung when you went to the site pa nakita mo yung barong tapos naisip mo din na yung barong pwedeng gawin galing sa abaka and ganun ganun ganun, ganun. so you were thinking of a plant that would be related to textiles and you thought that abaka was a perfect fit as something that you found because of the site na inspired ka of this from the site so that could also be some sort of a better storytelling on that point if you thought I needed that one so yung the way you described abaka plant i appreciate all the information it's there on the sheet but it was also information overload with all the numbers that we didn't really have to know on what you were presenting okay kasi for example so 87.4% of the world again ganun, ganun. so pa ako wait wait so paano din sa project at least pagka tinanong ka teka lang nakalimutan ko bakit abaka yung pinili mo because um nagod ba ni produce abaka ganun so ah sorry uh-huh. Tinanong ba niya, yeah. nagkot ba ni Janelle in the, the question of Sir Jerry about the yield of the abaka? Or, I mean, the, build, <laughs> the building capacity. I wonder if uh, Janelle was able to answer that. I was cooking. Si, si so, or, were you able to answer Sir Jerry's question about the building capacity to hold the number of abaka that we need? Um... Okay, because the based on my research, abaca here, abaca is um usually planted 2.5 meters from each other, which is why I did um try to in my initial find like initial iterations, I did try to do that terraced farming where like they're all um naka in line with each mm-hmm. other and they were in like steps, but yeah, it yeah. wasn't convenient in terms of like the spacing. Um, I don't have sheets for my previous iterations, but I did try that. Uh, mm-hmm. sort of did you like, try it on the uh, top floor, Janelle? Did you try it on the top floor? That that terracing idea. Um no, but what I yeah, did was bad. um it sur- but, it surrounded the structure and it was it was from the first floor. Uh-huh. To like going up, but um in terms of like capacity for like the weaving also and everything within the structure it, it sort of limited the space also especially since the lot is um limited yeah so if i feel like if i had a bigger lot i could have explored more also with like the the spacing of abacon you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. actually understandable but- naman with the lot and you magiging yield eh. Parang yeah. hindi naman, I don't think naman the entire thing could yield everything talaga. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I wish yung dun sa may part ng mga information about the abaka, itong slide na to. The way that you would have said it na, um, this it's notable on a lot of aspects, ginto ginto like mm-hmm. in our country, siya yung top, isa sa top ng mga ginto tayo sa Philippines yun. But more importantly, nakita ko yung, ito yung sizing niya, okay yung mm-hmm. yield niya for my area, even though you don't see the numbers, but you know, you just tell it to mm-hmm. us and we, ah, gets go. And I looked at the sizing that would affect how the architecture would be. You don't have to really say na, ah, it's 2.4 meters, that is plus 1.5. So, medyo hindi namin ma-absorb lahat-lahat yun and okay. everything you get. So, so, if it were some time summarized-ish that mm-hmm. way, um, mas, mas less information the yung storytelling mo and mas makakakwento ka on the experience. So, I think that would be very helpful. And then, pagkas kinutinize na yan, tsaka mailabas yung mga <laughs> information mm-hmm. na at times. Okay. So, um, like, like what you said in particular, sabi ko, I stick to this and that. Okay, ayan, yung you stick to this, you stick to that, yung sinabi mo. 
um as an interest dun sa may exploration rather than super going in depth on a certain information so may mga iba kang sinabi na oh ito yung nag-interest sa akin so i hope na parang you know parang you're talking about something you're interested in tapos parang kami na interested kami when we were making kwento yon so yung isang rendering mo yung unang rendering na pinakita mo yung ibon yung dove or yung pigeon ba yon natawa ako so avoid natin yung mga ganun ibon na in your face kind na No, mm-hmm. talaga naka-smile sa iyo. Ayun, tingnan, tingnan mo yung gusto ko yung may mga kable-kable pa nung electrical tools. <laughs> Tapos sabay merong ibon. Ayun, yan, yan. Tingnan mo yung ibon. Ayun, no. He's <laughs> baby to you. <laughs> oh, nga. Ayun, natawa, natawa si Sir Jerry papatagal niya yan pagka ano, pagka exhibit yan. Tanggal mo lang yung ibon. Oo, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, quirky yan. Pwedeng, pwedeng pag, ano, for fun. Okay. <laughs> Pagka-exhibit, ano, babawasan natin. <laughs> yeah. So, so I hope you went to the party first so that we are able to also piece the puzzle in our heads first before you showing us na, ito na yung final product. Ha? Huh? I don't understand it. So, yun yung nangyari na when I saw it, I didn't understand it yet. And then when you were saying it part by part, ah, yun yun. Ah, ito to yun. Versus, um, rendering why some of the fabric is being flown by the wind. Yes, also <laughs> that. Actually, ang isang comment ko would have been nice if the fabric was also somewhat um parang medyo kurti na siya, nagiging kurti na siya. So that way, pag nagpapalit yung kulay, nag-iiba na, nag-evolve din yung architecture mo because of your um color nung tela. So that would have been also an interesting point. And baby, paano yung storage niya? Kasi may mga kulay siya, di ba? So yung storage niya could also become some sort of a wall that also changes in time. Parang nagiging pixelated type of wall siya, which would be interesting. Although, maganda din yung ginawa mo ni, na module na pwede maghang. I really like that also with with all the curtains that you can open and close. It's very dynamic. But um, I know na you could push yung dy- being dynamic ng architecture mo further. So, yun yung mga ilang challenging points if you would sa susunod na design class and it would be something else. You, you always um, think of how it changes through time and that would give your architecture a different flair. And I hope you take note of that one. So, very nice yung terrorist form to hold your abaca na it becomes the architecture, it becomes the structural. So I really like that one. So it's also holistic in that sense. So that's also very commendable. So um, my question is, ito yung lagi kong tinatanong din na isa, rather than the space, sabi ko, so if I change the plant to something that's the same dimension as abaka, and maybe pwede maging textile, will the building still work? So yan yung isang tanong ko. Mm-hmm. So it's actually a question that's pushing your, ano, just, Think of it for yourself and you know your, the answer for yourself. So whatever answer it is, if you think it is really only for Abaka, then um, alam mo sa sarili mo na mission success ka dyan sa design mo. But if you think na baka pwede kasi yung gintong plant, meron ka pang pwedeng i-change up. So there might be something that you can still add to the architecture na parang masabi na itong building na to pa sa Abaka lang yun. Pag pinalitan mo yung Abaka, hindi na yung mag mm. So I hope you get that point na yeah. ano. So, yun yung isang question to test if it really is a building for what you intended to be. <laughs> yun yung, they like that question. Anyway, um, I love the party about the weaving. Yung may bilog. Yung isa yung, tas yung may mga tela na pababa. Can you open that one? Yung, I like it because it shows, yan, yung multiple floors. That's really, really nice and cleverly done. And even how you modulate it around. Ang ganda, nung, ang ganda nung sheet na to. It's one of my favorite sheets when I saw it. I'm like, oh my gosh, it gets ko na. And diba? I mean, you, you imagine yourself there and you're, wow, I want to I wanna see this very cathedral-like space. Diba? And the fabric is moving. Yeah. Uh, We're shipping then, these uh, abaca fabrics. Ang ganda yan. Although yung isang inisip ko, could it be also another um, arrangement? Yung mga ano na yun, medyo on the design principle side na. Although this one also really works well and naganda no experience. And um, I... I'm actually not sure kung um, nakwento mo yung experience-wise of how you would experience this space. Yung, rather than just saying, ah, nagdidip down yung fabric. You were like, oh, mag-envelope ka ng fabric at ito yung malandaman mo. Meron ako isang comment describing the sound of the weaving is also good. So you were 
seeing the experience inside and how it sounds like so you can imagine the space kasi yun yung ano hindi naman tayo no walk through and hindi naman natin nakikita talaga yung building so it's as much as possible we put in what we expect the architecture to perform as and that was a good storytelling point that you said na hanggang dun sa auditory na lang kang nakukuwento mm-hmm. sa amin so now now after noon pa lang Tsaka ko palang nagets yung perspective and what the building is actually doing. So, parang nasayang lang nung pinakita mo nung una. Tapos parang nag-wonder lang kami na, ha? Parang alabo. Parang mas maganda na the other way around and the boom, surprise. And then it all comes together like, ah, gets ko talaga kagad. Yung ganun na thing. So, um, maganda yung sinasabi mo, yung orchestration of the sound. Um, I did hope, I'm not sure ha, hindi ko nakita eh. If you took cues from acoustic designs, like maybe form of a theater, parang si Tracy, sinabi ni Sweeping Form was about the sound also, which was actually very nice on her part. So, did you take any acoustic design cues that you applied to the architecture since you were also describing about the sound? Um, basically, um, my main acoustic uh, mm-hmm. uh, design Uh, for this project is the fabric itself. So okay. I focused on the flow of the fabric. But other than that, uh, um, I'm not sure if you know this, but the the way the the concentrism of the the <laughs> the columns um, sort okay. of emulate um, the way uh, historical churches were designed. Okay, um, and, <laughs> um, I didn't go further into it anymore, but uh, yeah, uh, concentrism has something to do with acoustics, mm-hmm. yeah, with like so, the textures and everything. So, so um, it would have been also something in your party, para, para mm-hmm. oh, yeah. yung yung could have been your storytelling, na ganito yung weaving, and then there's a sound, and you were thinking that the sound can be bounced this way to make it reverberate around the space. So that would have been an additional plus. Plus, ano sa'yo na ano. Kasi okay lang yan. It's there. You really intended it to be that way. So, that's very good. Um, your plans are very clean. Yung hindi ko alam kung okay lang ako dun sa may font na ginamit mo. Kaso, bagay siya sa branding mo. So, I'm not complaining. <laughs> like your legends. Di ba? I mean, uh, yeah, something yeah. that's ano eh. Yung hindi, ano. Yung, hindi medyo hindi scripty eh. But yours was very... Ay, yung music. Ay, music, ano, um, umikot siya ng ilang beses okay. kasi ilang minutes yung ano mo. <laughs> But it's okay. I'm still trying, uh, I'll try yeah. to find a better sound. So, <laughs> sarili ako. So, I'll... Sa amin na lang yun. Yeah. So, yung project mo, I like the project a lot. I think it did hit so much marks, a lot of marks. Uh, most of the marks, actually. The Abaca fabric is only on the inside. That was what I was wondering, how it would look on the outside na sana it could really affect and make it more dynamic. Mm-hmm. Despite being current um, peak design, I think this is also one of the designs na medyo na doon na siya sa may parang talagang medyo sa high-end level na siya nung, or medyo super developed na siya. I still think it can be pushed because yung may mga ad- added feedback thing kami, but everything is really impressive already. And um, although this is what is being found, the idea of holding plants yun yung nagiging structure and then the products become a part of the architecture and the activity is solely for the abaca and nothing else and that really creates your building into an abaca building and it is a very good job it is one of my favorites also and I think you really did really well on the creative typology and uh-huh. congratulations I really also like your project so good job great job Thanks, diba, it really is an abaca building. Yun yung ano eh, yun yung question, is it really a building na ganito? And kung pinalitan ko yung halaman, kagano pa ba yan? Yun yung, that's the question. That... Um, yeah, and and uh, also Janelle, maybe because you chose the Tiboli uh, culture, if you could have pushed, uh, you know, the elements of their culture, their architecture, their oh, color yeah. into the building. I wanted to ask that because I was really curious on your input on the culture since indigenous culture is sort of a touchy subject um well, like well, yeah. to what extent um uh sort of mimicking Appropriate their culture yeah. also in yeah, yeah no you know what the 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 problem is not uh what you appropriate 
or how mm -hmm. much you appropriate from a culture, it's really acknowledging that it is from them. That is the question because a lot mm -hmm. of designers don't acknowledge it. And also to give back to the culture, part of the profits that you got by using elements of uh, their culture, you give back mm -hmm. to the community. I think uh, in some way or the other. I think the uh, question like compensation, you know, from uh, my entire stu student studios struggle on when to stop when they are accumulating all these ideas together when they're synthesizing everything because I can't provide them a concrete answer as to you know how much then they need to to incorporate and I always say mm -hmm. it's always about the balancing act and it's good that you mentioned that it's all about acknowledging. And, acknowledging uh, and compensation yeah and then uh there's really i don't know if there's really a quantifiable uh standard to do that but uh, i guess the starting point is uh, you know acknowledgement of your yeah. mm -hmm. and, then and, apply it. and i know and, and really working with them also you know making sure that you get another culture and then the, yeah but tama yan, Janelle, you're in the right place you're being careful with that because it's such yes, a big yes and tama, rightly so. They've been abused for centuries already. Uh, I have a last question. I don't know material most building. This um, orangey, uh, it looks like something that grew out in the Sahara Desert. <laughs> I'm sort of, uh, I was, if I had more time, I would have explored on pigmented concrete since uh, the, the program also involves like dye, right? So, oh, it's um, clever. Yeah. If I had more time, I would have explored on it, but I wanted to use a sort of subtle take on pigmented concrete. Also, to even if the structure juxtaposes the place, it sort of also merges with the surrounding materiality of kamuning, which is concrete. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, tinalak, right? Tinalak is the fi fabric of the tiboli. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and it's predominantly purple, red, black, and tinges of white. I think yeah. that's it. So, you know, if you, let's say, will appropriate their culture, I think choosing those colors for your building is not really something that is going to be uh, disrespect to them, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that from them. But maybe just inform them that you're, you're doing that. Yeah. So, thank you, Janelle. Yeah. Actually, may isa pa akong sasabihin. May, na may naisip lang ako sa exterior form ni mm -hmm. Janelle. Kasi iniisip ko din yung flow ng fabric. You know, it's all very vertical and how the threads are also you know, very horizontal or vertical. Parang um, yung sa tingin ko yung parang naging arching elements. Parang, nag, parang hindi siya sa akin naging match for that. Maybe if it were mm -hmm. something like more of very very vertically thready kind of ano mm -hmm. that would that would have been a match then uh -huh. more yeah. match for the entire, like uh, 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 and like um elements of the yeah you could create tama, it tama. more holistically through and through although mm -hmm. you know this is um maganda naman kasi yung intention of the planters and the planters it becomes actually the structure diba? it's also nice approach that way but it was also a different idea lang na a different take that could be who knows uh ayun but very what? nice project overall huh? yeah. <laughs> exhibit mo ba to <laughs> exhibit ko to uh, oo naman oo naman so may, may nakita ba yung model may model ka ba Janet? oh no my model is so bad <laughs> gagawa siya bago ah, yeah 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 that's right i saw that <laughs> Sige. Um, next up, <laughs> try to limit it lang guys kasi yari si Kung Gabi na. Wala na si Sir Jerry. <laughs> Oo nga. <laughs> Ako ay uh, mayroon pa three. Okay. Ayun. Four more pala. Four. Okay. Sige, Daniel, bilis. thank you. Thank Kaya you. ko naman bilisan dun sa may iba pagka natapos na yan. 